now is that just around the corner from where she'll be sitting, we will have set up a quadruplets baby shower, random act style. Well, come here. We need four of these. I hope. between Michigan's upper and lower peninsulas is enchanting Mackinac Island, a little town preserved somewhere in time. Famous for the iconic Grand Hotel and a ban on motor vehicles. I think this is a lot of fun to have bikes really take over the painting. So what's the real story behind this fairy tale? And how can I fuse its past and present into one painting? So join us as we paint the town of Mackinac Island. Hi, I'm Dave McCann. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. You're watching BYU TV on KBYU DT Provo Salt Lake City. Coming up, the Cougars come off the bye week by hosting the Huskies of NIU. We are looking ahead to the weekend with the head coach, DB Michael Shelton, and quarterbacks coach Aaron Roderick as BYU football with Kalani Sitake starts now. <laughs> Let's it go! Finds his guy! Touchdown! Hill for a first down and more! Hurdles his way! Touchdown! Campbell throws it! Touchdown! Here's our quarterback, Ty Duffin. Waiting, waiting. Here's the pass. Touchdown! Toss to Luke. Luke on the sidelines of the play. Double go! Touchdown, BYU! Quarterback draw. 20, 50, 10! Oh, he's gonna go! Touchdown, Cougar! Running it right, 20, 15, 10, touchdown, Matt Hanlon! Zach goes for the end zone, he's got Gunnar Romney, he's got a touchdown catch! This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome into Studio C at the beautiful BYU Broadcasting Building for our weekly simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We invite you to join the conversation by submitting questions for tonight's guests on Twitter using hashtag Sitake Show, as well as Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV sports accounts. BYU head coach Kalani Sitake joining me on set. And after a week away, we are back and you are back. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Thank you. How did the bye week go for you and the guys? It was good. We, we had a, a lot of extra work for Northern Illinois. They have a bike as, as well, so um, not really a huge advantage there. So we made, had to make sure that we practiced and, and, and introduced our opponent early and then um, hit the weight room hard and, and gave them a little bit of rest, you know, and get caught up in their academics. We're right in the middle of midterm. So uh, I think we accomplished a lot, and we're looking forward to the, the next season, which is right now for the, the last push in the uh, end of this, this 2018 season. But you had a bit of practice during the off week before you got back into the regular week, mode, yeah, right? Yeah, we did, and, and um, really some good physical hard practices, and it's what we needed, and um, had some time to rest a little bit over the weekend, not playing a game on Saturday. So uh, the guys have been really good this week. You know, we had a great practice yesterday and another great one today. So um, I think I'm looking forward to seeing them play the game on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, there was some rest uh, time and some downtime for your guys during the bye week. We know that because uh, some of them had uh, social media. Guys were fishing. Uh, guys were uh, going to basketball games. There's Micah and Akile at a BYU game, a Cougar tip-off. And so, uh, you know, guys had a little more time than normal to, to chill a little bit. Yeah, they, they had fun. Uh, they, they also went to some <laughs> other schools' football games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Zach yeah, Wilson think, up on I the hill. I think they have season tickets there for a while, so that, that was cool. Yeah, we got, got to see um, future opponents and had some time to, with our families and, and uh, got some recruiting done with, with our coaches. So it was a lot of fun, and, and we used as much of the time as we could to help our program. And, uh, but I think we had a good jump start to Northern Illinois, and, and uh, our guys are, are fresh, and they're, they're excited for this last push. We didn't talk last week, of course, uh, no show during the bye weeks. So it was 10 days ago that BYU last played a game. Let's look back a little bit uh, on the, what was a really good game for BYU. As 6-1, and one, Hawaii came in to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. They're looking for their first win ever in Provo. Uh, spoiler alert, didn't happen. Uh, there's uh, Zach Wilson off a double throw early, well-run play, and he took one of the options available to him, which was Matt Bushman and Lopini Katoa, one of seven different guys, Kalani, to score a touchdown for you in this game. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to see the guys contribute, and um, 
you know, there's a lot of guys on the field that, that, that have re worked really hard and competed and earned their, the right to be on the field. And uh, we were able to get some pressure on the quarterback and do some things defensively that I liked our game plan. And um, love this play. I love seeing the QB draw from Zach and seeing him use his feet to make plays. On a third and long, a quarterback draw from Zach Wilson puts him in the end zone. And BYU had a 14 nothing lead through the first quarter. Those 14 points equaled the first quarter output in the preceding 10 games combined. So a great start for BYU. It's 14 nothing, and they're looking for more. And you get some more from Matt Hadley, who's been doing everything for you this year. He runs in for a touchdown to make it 21 nothing. Yeah, and he's been all over the, the place as far as playing defense, special teams, and, and offense. And um, this is, he's had tons of success as a running back in high school, and you're seeing what he can do for us uh, on our offense. And it was a good day uh, to get some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Hawaii sits out there with either uh, four or five wides, and uh, Cole McDonald's not getting rid of the ball super quickly. You can get in on him. Yeah, and I was really pleased with that. I mean, we had some missed plays and some missed sacks, but uh, the, the point is we were making it uncomfortable for the QB in, in the pocket. That's what that's what results in good turnover. You get an Austin Lee interception with BYU leading it to 21 to three, and another day in which BYU finished a plus in the turnover margin. And BYU's last three wins have all come with BYU finishing. Uh, positive in that uh, takeaway tally margin. Good sign for BYU. You're leading at 21 to 3, still in the first half when the great first half continues and Zach Wilson finds another freshman, Dallin Holker. Yeah, for his first touchdown in his career and hopefully uh, one of many, you know, that, that to come in the future. Great first half. BYU is up big at the break. When BYU leads by big at the break, they're not going to lose the game and they did not lose this one. Is at 35 to 10. Big fella Furuta does get in the end zone for Hawaii. Yeah, creep the Rainbow Warriors a little closer, but it was all BYU on this night, leading at 42 to 17. And again, more pressure on the quarterback as Corbin Kafusi picks up another one of his sacks on the season. That's a good year for you. Yeah, and, and they've done some good things. You see a big play here with Matt Hadley. Um, you know, we were trying to run out the clock and, and burn some time. and. Um, we got to the point where we were up by uh, where a field goal really wouldn't matter and uh, we you know, got fourth and sixth situation and it was just pretty much find a way to make a play. And, and Gunnar, Gunnar, Gunnar Romney, another freshman, that's his second BYU touchdown. So many freshmen scoring, so many different guys scoring. And so just looking at the two involved in that play there, uh, Kalani, uh, you've, got a, you've got a lot of talent for a lot of years here and some early some young players are making big plays early for you. Yeah, and just... Um, Really happy with with uh, the hard work that they put in and um, being able to see them uh, grow even in this in this uh, season so far midseason we've seen them make some huge strides and improvement and progress in their own ability to, to play but also learning the playbook and understanding our culture and helping promote it that they've been uh, great and, and you know we, we had to credit a lot of the upperclassmen and the guys welcoming them into the program and and teaching them all they need so to compete against them so uh, it's a huge uh, compliment to our guys and the leadership that they show in helping these young kids come along and, and the young freshmen contributing. Well, it was a week and a half ago, but let's get to the game stats presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. BYU did defeat Hawaii by a big margin, 49 to 23. It's actually the fourth straight game BYU's played that was decided by 25 points or more. Last time that happened was way back in uh, 1996. And so there have been some wild ones here in terms of big scores the last few games. And a really complete night for the Cougars and uh, Kalani. Really tough to argue with that rush total in particular. When you're pushing 300, it's going to be a good night for the Cougs. Yeah, so we, we should try to do that more often. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the formula for victory this season. The big numbers running it have uh, equated with BYU's wins. And BYU does get to now 4-3 and three on the year. As we noted from the highlights, it was the first start for Zach Wilson. And uh, Zach uh, had the most touchdown passes and, most, and highest pass efficiency for any true freshman making his first start at BYU. And, uh, yeah, there'll be things he'll want to tidy up from, from the performance, but for the most part, uh, he was excellent in his first start. Yeah, I, th I think it worked out really well, and, and his preparation, uh, the way that he, he got himself ready for this game, it's just uh, he's been that way all season long. And since he got here in January, he's been waiting for this moment, and I think he earned the opportunity to be on the field, and uh, it, it showed. I mean, I, I just look at the, that last, this last game and see all the guys that are contributing that were on the field, whether it's special teams, offense, or defense, and... Um, their hard work paid off, and, and Zach's the guy that's, um, and he understands that, and I, I appreciate his patience because this, the timing, I think, worked out for him, and, and he earned the right to be on the field. Yeah, what made Zach the right guy to go to at this point in the season? Um, well, we talk about com competition every week, you know, and, and guys earning the right to be on the field, and um, it just seemed like the, with this, at this point, 
in the season, it was a, we we're at the point where his skill set has proven that he needs to, he needs to be on the field more. And um, we had to make that decision, and, and we went with it. And you know that one gets all the attention, but nobody really gets concerned when we make moves on other other positions. Just at BYU, the QB factory, that's kind of where all the focus goes. But we will always compete for uh, playing time. And um, guys know that if they, they, they compete and they work hard, they can earn more playing time uh, in practice and throughout the week. And I think that creates a good culture for us of, of guys just earning the right to be there. As a true freshman, as young as he is, and he's the youngest freshman to ever start a quarterback for BYU, now that you've seen what you've seen from him and what you've seen already in the months leading up to the season, um, is it an exciting thing to know you've got somebody that talented at, at that position who's so early in his career? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for a lot of the youth on our team, but more than anything, I'm excited about the chemistry and the, and the family atmosphere on our team. The environment that we have right now, it's, it's, an, it's a position where a lot of guys are, are, are thriving and they're starting to really progress in so many ways, not just in football. And it's a, it's a, it's a huge um, tribute to our, our leaders on our team and what they're, what they're trying to create here with this program, and I've been really excited uh, on the culture of our program and the, f the family learning that there's just a, a sense of um, wanting to learn and get better and, and our guys are learning and growing and, and um, we're asking them to do it at a rapid rate and it's starting to show a lot more now um, and then uh, with the bye week we took advantage of it and we'll see how much we've grown from last week into this game coming up this weekend. Fans were hoping that uh, Squally Canada could get better at a rapid rate. Uh, you played without him uh, last game. How's he coming along? Yeah, and, and he's, uh, he's been practicing with us, so we anticipate him to be ready. So that gives us another, uh, another weapon that we can use. And what's nice about the, the um, highlights is you see so many guys with the ball, right? And whether they're receiving it or running it, um, there's just a lot of guys contributing to the success on the field, and we're looking forward to having him back. All right, be good. That's segment one in the books. Fans for your BYU sports play-by-play day-to-day. Watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, Kalani Sitake previews BYU and NIU. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake here in Studio C at BYU TV. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. Iamflash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Life as a foundling isn't easy. With oppressive taskmasters and unforgiving rules, you'd think life would be pretty bleak. Unless you have someone like Hetty around. Hetty Feather, Sundays at Six Mountain on BYU TV. October, see the good in the world with exciting shows on BYU TV. Laugh till you cry with all new episodes of your favorite sketch comedy known as Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain. Visit with Kalani Satake as we discuss the BYU football team on BYU Football with Kalani Satake, Tuesdays at 6 Mountain. It's a new season of Relative Race with more puzzles, relatives, and surprises along the way, Sundays at 7 Mountain. There's something for everyone here on BYU TV. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU versus Northern Illinois, October 27, 230 Eastern, 1230 Mountain. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, Healing for Life, and by Nissan, Innovation That Excites. We are back for more BYU football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Saturday afternoon, yes, a 1.30 kick at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's BYU and Northern Illinois. 
Two teams coming off a of bye. As open weeks last week, uh, two teams, Kalani, both four and three on the year. What do you like about these guys? Yeah, they, they play, um, I mean, they're a physical team, so it'll be a lot of fun uh, to be on the field with them, and, and they've done some, they've had some really tough games. I mean, they played Florida State and Iowa, and, and uh, they, they've hung, hung in there. You know, they played Utah really tough, and so um, I know they're excited to play, uh, play us and, and come out here to Provo, so I'm excited that we're at home, but they, they're a team that has all our attention. They're really aggressive on defense. The, the DN right there, number 15, is an All-American. And, Sutton and, Smith. Yeah, and he creates all kinds of havoc. So uh, it'll be a good test for us, and we're looking forward to the challenge. He has seven sacks on the year. I think three of them are strip sacks, including one that helped them come back to beat Ohio in their last game, very late in the game. Yeah, and, and he's a special player, and you kind of have to know where he's at at all times because they'll use him on the left and right side, and um, they'll change him up. So our defense, our offense will have to be aware of that. And, that our defense will have to be ready for a quarterback that can run, and, and um, they'll use him in the, the QB run game, but they'll also do a lot of the read stuff that we've seen from so many different spread offenses, but they'll also condense the field and put t two tight ends on the field. So it'll be a, be a good challenge. It'll be a good physical game for us. And I'm pretty sure it's two jersey number 15s, right? I think it's 15 on defense, Sutton uh -huh. Smith, and 15 on offense, so Marcus Childers, the quarterback. Uh, they do struggle to score, uh, but they take it away a lot and keep scores low defensively so the defense is really where they hang their hat some really nice defensive numbers uh, for that team right now and again they this is how this is why they I think they are four and three because offensively the numbers point aren't, aren't there but these are all numbers that show just how good they can be in some really important categories yeah and they have some really explosive guys up front and they have uh, some skill in the, in the back end as far as all other defense goes and they have a, a really good scheme and, and they're not afraid to dial up the pressure so uh, fun to watch and, and, and uh, exciting to prepare I guess but our, our guys will be ready for it Okay, what can we say about their offense? Again, they're not uh, putting up, uh, you know, numbers that jump off the page at you. They're having low-scoring games. Uh, but what you mentioned, Childers already pretty mobile. I think he ran for a buck seventy almost last game. Yeah, and they have. I mean, whenever a quarterback can run, you have to be, account for them, and that that they'll test your coverage a little bit, you know. So we have to make sure that our guys are assignment sound. That's going to be the key for us this week is making sure that we're assignment sound, that we have to be able to dial up our pressures whenever we can. We still have to be aggressive and play. Um, you know, all 11 on the guy, guys on the field need to do their job, but um, especially the QB being able to run, they have they have good skill, and so uh, it's not, it's not going to be an easy task, but it's a good challenge for us. And defensively, we have to create a, a bunch of mess and chaos on the field. Mess and chaos. Uh, yeah. First time these two teams have met ever. Uh, you'll meet again, but not till 2020. You won't play them next year, but you're playing the year after that. You'll be going to uh, DeKalb, Illinois, home of Northern Illinois, out there in DeKalb. That'll be fun. Midwest, yeah. Yeah. But they got to come to the altitude right now and enjoy the mountains. They'll be here <laughs> on Saturday for the 130 <laughs> kick. Yeah, th yes, enjoy the altitude, uh, Midwesterners. Check out BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. It's the latest in Cougar sports with a social media twist. Watch it right now on the BYU Sports Nation Facebook, IGTV, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen at a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. After our break, Kalani Sitake taking your questions from in-studio and social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Call it a path. through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. 
can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch the story track tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Francisco women's soccer game Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV sports game day replay. BYU versus Northern Illinois, Saturday on BYU TV. Let's get you up to speed on some Cougars in the NFL. Kyle Van Noy, the Patriots, scored his first NFL touchdown on this past weekend, picking up a block punt, scoop and score. Taysom Hill, another converted fake punt. He's actually the team's second leading rusher behind Alvin Kamara. <laughs> and uh, Fred Warner, almost his double-digit tackle tally as the 49ers took one on the chin against the Rams this past weekend. Welcome back to the show. Use hashtag Sipake Show on Twitter and comment. <laughs> on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A session. Speaking of which, we're about to start one right now, right here in Studio C. We have Brady Blake at the mic. Hello, Brady. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, so Coach, uh, just curious about Bo Hodge. Uh, what's the latest with him? Do you see him getting any playing time anytime soon? Bo Hodge has been, um, without being too specific, he's been battling injuries all season long. Yeah. And so that's been the major right, hang up on him. Thanks. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, at social media, at ghanson25 on Twitter, asks, what did you do personally during the bye week? Hopefully something fun. Um, hung out with the family, and um, it took a nap. My wife put it out there on social media, so. <laughs> you sleeping. Yeah, yeah. trying to ke catch up on some sleep, but um, really just trying to hang out with the family as much as I can and be a dad and um, watch some football and, and um, just enjoy Enjoy the sunshine before the snow comes. Okay, and it's coming. <laughs> At Troy Beagley on social media, what is the biggest takeaway or biggest differences you felt from the Utah State game to the Hawaii game? Um, we're just trying to get our identity back. I, th I think we went away from what we are as a team and um, trying to establish our, the physical part of the game. Is, it has to be part of our, our identity. And, um, and then we just have to be aggressive, uh, um, wherever that it may be on offense, defense, or special teams. Uh, that's that's what we have to hang our hat on and being aggressive and being physical and playing tough BYU football. Uh, from social media, at Nate Dub 9 asking, Coach, what is the role of statistics in game prep and or player development? What do you think? Um, well, statistics, is, it's important to look at the, the data and be able to analyze all of it because I think it matters. I, I know that the, the money ball thing when, when you had with baseball, it works a little bit more when you have 168 games or whatever to, to get your stats from. But um, football-wise, you, you, you have to look at stats. It matters, you know, and you have to factor that into making decisions and scheme and everything that you do. So I think it's important. I, I, I know that um, we did a lot of self-scout, a lot of self-evaluation to see what tendencies we have as a team. But a lot of teams do that, especially during the bye week. Um, and just trying to make sure that we're not showing the tendencies and that we can break some. So um, just putting it out there, if you think we're going to do something, it <laughs> may not be what you think. But we'll see what happens. But that, that's important for us to know how we're progressing and what we're giving away. Sometimes you, it's hard for you to, to see it unless you take some time to, to analyze the data and look at the stats. Without getting into specifics, are there any things that you found out uh, that you're doing well that, that maybe not showing up most obviously in the final score, for example? What are some things that are maybe under the radar a little bit that you think really is, are doing well? I, I think we're playing smart. I mean, I, I think for the most part is that uh, we'll have more success when we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. And um, we haven't played uh, great football because that's been in most of our issues. And whether it's because of difficulty of scheme or talent or, or personnel, or whatever the reason is, we just need to find a way to to get our identity back and then make sure that we put our guys in a position to have success. And that's what it's come, it comes down to. And, and that's my job as a head coach is to make sure that we consistently play our style of football and, and that we have a better chance of su succeeding. Okay. At the TB underscore Adamson 
Says, Coach, who on the staff reminds you the most of Roger French? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, the creature is no one like him. So um, I think anyone that has been coached by Roger French uh, knows him the best. And, and I, I love my relationship with him. And he was our O-line coach. And, yeah, I miss him. But, but he's, a, he's a special one. And I think those that know him know exactly what he's about. And it's just an honor for me to... to to have known him and have him coach me. Okay, uh, this last one's from someone we know, uh, at Jerem Jordan on Twitter, asking, <laughs> uh, Monday you wore a black beat yeah, digger BYU hoodie. He says his birthday is next week. Can he have it? <laughs> well, it would look like a huge, it would look like my eight-year-old wearing it because that's a 3X. <laughs> so Jerem wouldn't fit in that. But I can tell you this, that it's, it's on gokoogs.com the bookstore so um, someone that loves Jerem should buy it for him his birthday here we go next week by the way Bronco called it a grave digger cougar J Jerem calls it the beat digger cougar what is it with his paw down you know the whole thing is, is that's there, the only cougar I remember answer? when yeah. I was growing up that was that was on every shirt so. yeah it was just the cougar back then now it's yeah. gotta have, yeah I was curious about now, that this is a sailor cougar there's that you know the sailor cougar yeah and there's all these different things I like it but I like sailor cougar myself yeah. yeah I like them all Okay, so it's a, it's go, it's a, we're, we're going to have someone just go online and get it for Jeremy. I don't know if I'm supposed to promote it, but I think it's okay that I promote sure. it. Yeah, yeah gokoogs.com. Okay, there it is. It's available. The black hoodie. Just have to search it. And it is, it's a good point. I'm not sure you and Jeremy are the same size. Definitely not. Yeah. So he's, you got to get some, some protein shakes in there first, real quick. And, and eat a lot of carbs to get this body. <laughs> to get this body, yeah. that's right. <laughs> totally sculpted. All right, uh, tomorrow night, watch and listen as the BYU men's basketball team plays St. Martin's Division II foe. It's the exhibition opener for the Cougs. It's Wednesday night, tomorrow night, 9 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Coming up next, senior defensive back Michael Shelton joins us. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. I feel like we're home right here. The next episode of Heady Feather, Sunday at 6 Mountain on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Ah, uh, there it is. Brigham Field at Husky Stadium there in DeKalb, Illinois. It's Brigham Young hosting NIU this weekend. Now, BYU will be there, but not until uh, 2020. And by the way, just in case you're curious, uh, their singular Husky actually is IE, not Y. And so it's Husky Stadium with a Husky H-U-S-K-I-E. That's how they like to do it. They're Huskies 
and their Husky is singular at IE, so we're not making a mistake if you ever see that. But we know about it's all Brigham Field, so welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. We invite you to use hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions coming up a little bit later on. Please welcome to the show for the first time, Aaron Roderick, quarterback's coach. How you doing, A-Rod? Doing Good well, to see thanks. you. Good to see you. So first appearance on the show and the first season on the BYU staff officially, so welcome back in both accounts. Uh, did you always see yourself back here at some point, or is the coaching path such that you got to let things kind of happen and just go with it? Uh, coaching is so year to year. You know, you really, I think most coaches feel like you're just coaching for your life every single season, <laughs> that you don't, you don't ever dare look too far ahead. So, um, I mean, I always had fond memories and, and good relationships with people here and stuff like that, but... I never looked that far ahead. Happy to be back, though? Yeah, it's been great. It's been really great. I uh, work for a great boss and have a great staff uh, to work with and love coaching these guys. What's the best thing about being part of the staff? Uh, it's just fun to come to work every day. You know, we got really great camaraderie and, and uh, you know, in all areas, we're, we're just got a really good staff. First of all, there's really good football coaches, so you come, you come to work with your, you know, on your toes. You know, you want to be, want to definitely be ready to pull your share of the load every day and, and always be prepared and stuff like that. And then it's fun just to work with good guys. You know, we've got a great staff of guys and, and uh, love working with all of them. And we know there are some. Who are the guys that you've worked with before you got here to BYU? Uh, well, obviously, Kalani and I worked together at Southern Utah and at Utah, and we were uh, teammates as well here. And then I coached Elisa at Snow College, and then I coached him at Snow and then I coached with him at Utah. Um, and then Ed Lamb, I was a teammate with him and a graduate assistant with him years ago. We were GAs for one year together um, before he went to Idaho. And then um, I was teammates with Gennaro. I'm probably forgetting someone. Uh, coach Fessy. Oh, and I coached Fessy at Southern Utah. I was his position coach there. Um, so plenty of connections. Yeah, <laughs> lots. Yeah. I, I could, yeah, probably. There's probably someone I'm forgetting. <laughs> so that, 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 that's enough of them yeah. right there. And then uh, getting to know, and I'll just throw a name out there, uh, someone like Ryan Pugh, who's new to the game, so to speak. What's it been like working with him? He is a really good coach. That guy's super sharp, smart guy, uh, fun. He brings a lot of energy every day. He's really enthusiastic and very smart. So I've, I've enjoyed working with him a lot. Uh, what are your most prominent uh, recollections from your playing days here at BYU? Late nineties. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I wasn't I wasn't a great player, but I my recollection is just um, being at a time when there was a uh, sort of a feeling that we we always had a chance to win and we could beat anybody on the schedule and there was a lot of confidence I think in the program at the time and um, it was it was fun to play with great players and you know, I was lucky to get on the field as much as I could, but um, I had a great experience. We don't have any wide receiver 17s right now, do we? I don't think. Jersey 17 uh, or do we? I don't think it's kind so. Of a, it's, sure like a, it's a pretty, pretty rare yeah, number for the position. A, yeah. How'd you end up with 17? Uh, I wanted four, and Chris Ellison and I were both junior college transfers, and we both wore number four, and he was in line before me, and he got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and then literally that's story. all it was. He, he, got, he beat me in line. They were like, they, there was no, no promises made to anybody. He just so you end one. up with 17 in that so, case. So, yeah, I just, that was the next best number available. All right, so Kalani, uh, you've known this guy for a long time, mm -hmm. and you've coached with him over the years as well. Uh, how is it to get him back here at BYU, somebody you know you wanted on the staff? Yeah, I've, I've, I've spent most of my coaching career with him and uh, obviously played with him. So a um, great friend of mine, one of my best friends, you know, and, and uh, we've, I, mean, I remember looking at the, the days when we were in Southern Utah together and, um, you know, working late nights and, and, and um, just growing in the profession, and now we're here. At BYU at our alma mater, and so it's just nice to have him back. And um, you gave him the nickname of A Rod, and it <laughs> stuck, you know. So uh, I forget his first name sometimes because I always call him A Rod, and, and that's. Uh, but it, A Rod is is uh, is brilliant, and he's humble. And the reason why our camaraderie on our staff it works really was well because of him. It's, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge part of, of of how he makes it work, and what he does with Coach Grimes, and what he does with our whole staff. And he's been around for a long time, and. Um, he he's a lot as, as far as his 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 uh his presence in the room is something that that 
you, he doesn't he doesn't show it. He's really humble, and but he's brilliant. The guy understands football, and he understands people, and he gets me. So I'm, I'm glad to have him back here with me, and I trust him with my life. Coach, you and uh, Coach Grimes and Kalani uh, made one quarterback decision in August and then a different decision in October. What went into both decisions and the timing of each? Uh, well, I mean, Tanner was the guy that was most ready to play at the time, and, and um, he gave us the best chance to win, we thought, in those games. We were, you know, we're a different team now than we were early in the season. Uh, we were a lot of big personnel groups, formations, shifts, motions, audibles. There was a lot of complicated stuff going on at the quarterback position early in the season. Um, Zach was doing a lot of good things in practice, but Tanner definitely was way ahead of him in terms of those things, and that schedule was rough. I mean, it, to, the thought of throwing a freshman out there to play, you know, Arizona and Cal and Wisconsin and Washington, um, you know, it, it felt like, and, and to give Tanner credit, man, he battled and I thought he did a good job. Um, the main the main reason we, you know, decided to give Zach a chance was just our team had changed a little bit. First of all, we we lost some of the, we had a couple of games where we struggled to run it a little bit and, and um, we lost some of our, you know, Moroni, we're a different team without Moroni. Uh, we, we didn't have Braden Elbakri for a little while. He was banged up and out for a bit and just, so uh, Zach just gave us a little bit of mobility, uh, a little ability to run a little bit and um, Tanner's done an awesome job in practice too. They still compete every day, and that's something about our program: is you compete every day for your chance to play. Doesn't just because you have one good game doesn't mean you're in there forever. You got to keep competing all the time. And what did Zach Wilson do that impressed you most to the point where you guys could make this change and feel good about it? How's it been to tutor him? Um, he, it's not any one thing. I just think he just he he's a good example. He just, he just got a little better each week, and and uh, we tell our players that practice reps matter, and. He just kept improving each week, and then when he got his chances to play in the game, he, he handled himself with poise and moved the team. And the quarterback's job in, in our offense is to take care of the football, move the team, and score points. And, and does, whoever does that the best will be the guy that plays for us. Now, his chronological age and his baby face appearance just make him look so young out there. Yeah. But he's being asked through some pretty... Uh, I'm not going to say complicated, but, but uh, there's some complex stuff going yeah. on out there. Does it surprise you how maybe advanced he is for just how young he looks out there? A little bit, but that's happening more and more now in football. I think quarterbacks especially are, are better trained than ever. You know, a lot of them get really good training individually, and then um, you got to give credit to the high school coaches in, in high school football now. In, in this state, there's a lot of really good coaches. High school football is is uh, is being played at a pretty high level now and guys are showing up ready to play and and um, so I, I give his coach his credit and, and then he's just a guy that prepares and really works at it. Okay, uh, Kalani, before the break, uh, what makes uh, uh, Aaron uh, a good quarter, a good position coach of the quarterbacks specific, specifically? Well, I, I talked about how brilliant he is, but he, he understands people and he gets his guys to play at, at the best of their ability and he has a long history of doing that. Um, from his days of graduate assistant to, to being a position coach, a coordinator. I mean, I worked for him as a, as a uh, running backs coach and tight ends coach, and I coached O-line under him too. So I got to see firsthand what he does, and I got to see what he did when we were at uh, the decade that we spent at Utah together. And um, he's a, a master of teaching these guys uh, their position. It doesn't matter what it is, but he understands football. And so, um, you know, I, I, and he's just, he's just humble. He won't accept any credit. He credits the high school coaches and, and his the way Zach was brought up, but a lot of the success that we have in this program is because of what he's done with that quarterback position. And if you look at the others, there's, there's guys that are in that position group that understand the game and they're ready to go. Um, there's guys like Jaron Hall and Joe Critchlow and um, Baylor Romney and Stacy Connor. Those guys are ready to play because of what uh, A-Rod does uh, as a position coach. All right, break time. Monday is at 1 Eastern. We talk football and BYU football with the coordinators on the Coordinator's Corner with Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Mondays at 1 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Coming up next, senior defensive back Michael Shelton joining us. This is BYU football in Kalani Sitake. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day. Like buying your first car, what a beaut. Or serving your mission, you come home and hop right into college. And then that magic day comes. 
marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey. But you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Okay, everyone. Gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. Secret. It's important, but I think I can trust you. It will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say. It's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! Girl, you know it! Please, no! No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio CL. Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. Really? Really? It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> I did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Good pressure on the punter, Klump, who boots it away from Shelton, who makes the catch on the run to the 25. Running out of room, it kept it going down the sideline. Well done by Michael. Middle of the field, 45-50. Shelton, 45-40. Punter gets him at the 35 of Arizona. Michael Shelton was hemmed in on the boundary. Somehow, tiptoes down the sidelines, comes toward the middle. A big punt return for Shelton. <laughs> and the Cougars in business at the 35 of Arizona. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Please welcome into Studio C our next guest and our player guest for the evening, senior defensive back and returner Michael Shelton. Michael, good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. So you, uh, you're just playing football for fun right now because you've already graduated, right? Right. So he's already got his degree. What, so you, to stay in school and stay busy, what are you doing besides football these days? I'm That's enough, by the way. What else are you doing? Um, I'm currently working an internship uh, in order for me to be eligible to play. Um, and that internship is working with youth kids, um, mental behavioral problems, at Provo Canyon School. Okay. You got out of, uh, you graduated in uh, family and life studies. Yeah. So what is that preparing you to do? The field you're interning in, for example? Um, kind of, yeah. I want to be a marriage therapist, so I will eventually have to get my... Um, master's degree, uh, so that's what I really want to do. You know where you're going to get your master's at? Probably here. All right, <laughs> all right. So, but Kalani, no more. Like you won't be able to keep Molly's getting his master's. He's done after this year, I guess, right? Oh, unless he wants to be a, a graduate assistant. That, that's an easy path in there. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> you could smart you, could you see it. yourself doing that? I could. I, it's it's always been hard for me just to sit and watch football, though. Like even <laughs> just like, even with our bye week just past weekend. Uh, I watched football, but I had to work out during the game. Like I couldn't just sit and watch the game. So it, it's, it's very hard for me to just sit and watch football. So I don't know. I don't know how I would do coaching either. <laughs> you, said, you said marriage therapy, right? Right. Uh, you're about to be married. Right. Okay. Uh, did you, bring, you brought your fiancé with us tonight? Yes. Where's she at? She's sitting in the She's front. Right well, you're going to get a shot here? Front row. There we go. And that's Courtney. <laughs> Hi, Courtney. Good to have you here. And you guys, uh, how'd you meet? We met through a mutual friend my first year being here. Um, so we've been dating for about four years now. And yeah. Four years. That, that's a nice long time to get to know somebody. It is, it is, it is a long time. And I told her... <laughs> I've, I've given her a lot of different times as far as when I would want to be married. I think I first told her uh, at the end of my sophomore year, and then I told her after I was graduated. So 
<laughs> after I graduated, <laughs> that's what I did. That's where we're at now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kalani, uh, your impressions of uh, Michael Shelton from afar and then getting to know him better. Oh, just love the energy that he has. He's right. He can't sit still. He, he always has to move around and um, he's busy. And, but I mean, if you look at the, the things that he does on the field, he, he's our punt returner, he, he kick returner, but he, he's one of our best corners. We used him at nickel last week, and, and, and um, uh, he's a physical. You know, he's not, not the biggest guy, but he's not afraid to, to get in there and get dirty. And um, he's just, he'll sacrifice whatever he can for the team. And that has really helped our, our uh, corners and DBs as far as his leadership and being able to show them how to be physical. We have a lot of young freshman corners that are contributing. and. A lot of that's because of what he's done in the room and, what ha and his leadership. And so he'll have success no matter what he does um, after he graduates. Well, he's already graduated, but <laughs> after he gets his master's, he, he can do whatever he wants. He's, he's that kind of kid. Michael, can you describe uh, growing up in uh, North Carolina and uh, what sports attracted you and where track and field fit into the mix with everything else you were doing as well? Um, growing up in North Carolina, well, it was a lot different from here. I, I, I say I grew up. I grew up in North Carolina, but I also grew up here as well. Um, but growing up in North Carolina was a lot different. Uh, I started out playing basketball when I was eight. Um, after basketball, uh, my father passed away, and uh, my sister thought I needed to be more physical and get some anger out. So then she told my mom, like, hey, let's put him in football. So that's how I started playing football. And after that, uh, through playing football, my football coach was also a track coach. And he talked to my mother, and he was my, he was my coach, and me and his son were best friends, so we hung out a lot. And he talked to my mother and was like, hey, like, he can run. Like, let me <laughs> get him out on the track and see what he can do. So that's how I started running track. And through doing all those things, I wanted to do so much more as far as sports, I wanted to play soccer. I, w I even snuck and played soccer one year <laughs> in middle school without my mother knowing. But uh, I was in sports year round, so it was hard for me to play baseball and do soccer and do those other sports. But um, as far as growing up, that was my life. Sports was my life. And as far as playing sports, school had to be a part of that in my household. And that's how I got here. You said one of your pastimes growing up, too, was uh, you spent a lot of time doing fishing. You spent a lot of time fishing back home? Oh, yeah. Um, so through playing basketball, uh, I met my godparents, and they did a lot of fishing, and my godbrother, and we did a lot of fishing together. So they introduced me to the fishing side in the country, and it was, they were in the country part of North Carolina. Um, so we did more country activities, riding four-wheelers, going fishing, doing stuff like that, and I enjoyed those activities. Okay, uh, kind of bumping around here. Uh, how much have you heard about the, the picture you and Mo Longi took during uh, Picture Day back in August? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, heard, I've heard about it. I've seen it everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a big fella. He is. Yeah. He is. Yeah, uh, that, that, that made the rounds for a while. It became popular it for a little bit. Uh, and I knew it would. That's why I decided to say yes. And then a lot of guys are on the team. Why did you say yeah to that? And I'm like, why not? <laughs> what are you officially, by the way, uh, dimensions, um, height and weight? I'm officially 5'7 and a half. I like to give myself that extra half and say 5'8. Okay. But, uh, you did, yeah. You've earned it. Yeah. yeah. I'm 5'7 and a half. I weigh 172. Yeah. And Kalani, he gets a lot out of that, right? Oh, he, he, he plays big. His heart is way bigger than his, his body. And, and he's a physical player. I mean, for, for his size, he, he's, you don't have to ask him to be physical. That's part of his nature. And so it's just been a lot of fun to, to be his coach. All right, Q&A for Michael and A-Rod coming up next. Fans, if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List, order online, then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. <laughs> After the break, your questions for Michael Shelton and Aaron Roderick as we continue on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Where's the cereal? Should be in there. I threw it out to make room for these. Mom, what? You have to eat more than just cereal. But this isn't even my apartment. How'd you get in? Listen, you can never escape a mother's love. And the answer is a crowbar. Is that my shirt? 
Yes, honey, I'm just gonna borrow it for a few days. Get groceries without mom. BYU Meal Plans. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. This October, see the good in the world with exciting shows on BYU TV. Laugh till you cry with all new episodes of your favorite sketch comedy known as Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain. Visit with Kalani Satake as we discuss the BYU football team on BYU Football with Kalani Satake, Tuesdays at 6 Mountain. It's a new season of Relative Race with more puzzles, relatives, and surprises along the way, Sundays at 7 Mountain. There's something for everyone here on BYU TV. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. Gunnar Romney, freshman, wide receiver. Uh, favorite movie, uh, probably say Warrior. Uh, favorite non-BYU sports team, probably basketball. Bucket list place to go. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Europe somewhere. Uh, favorite music group, uh, I don't know, I just like rap a lot. Uh, favorite food, I'd say hot wings. Would you rather sing or dance? Uh, neither, I'm not that type of person. Uh, Beach or Mountains, beach definitely. Favorite TV show, uh, SpongeBob. Favorite non-football hobby? Uh, sleeping, I guess. Favorite athlete would probably be Julio Jones. Biggest fear is heights. Favorite superhero, say Iron Man. Michael or LeBron, uh, that's a tough one. I gotta go LeBron. Favorite coach, uh, pass on that one. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio. That's our first pass, by the way, uh, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, we've got Michael Shelton and Aaron Roderick here in studio. and We've got uh, questions for both guys. Let's start right here in our live audience with Russell Alley. Hello, Grizz. What's up? Hey, Greg. Uh, Michael, this is for you. So as a punt returner, when you're back there, do you have any rituals that you go through before the punt uh, is kicked off? And then also, uh, what are you thinking when, the, when those guys are all barreling down on you? Um... A ritual for me is to, I, so a rule this year is to make sure our knee pads are below our knees. Uh, I pull them up as soon as the ball is kicked every time. Um, and I also pray that I catch the ball because most of the time I'm out there three consecutive plays before it's fourth down and I'm kind of winded. So I just pray I catch the ball every time. <laughs> Thanks. We showed the, uh, the thanks, Russ. Uh, we showed the uh, reserve return against Arizona, first game of the year. Uh, that would be a highlight for you, right? Nice play. Oh yeah. Have you? Yep. Now scoring is a bigger highlight than just yeah. you know a decent return. So I guess we go back. We talk about a fumble return against Utah State in 2016. Housing it is a little better than just a, a return that doesn't get yes. to the end zone. And and I, I plan on taking one to the house before this year is over with. Okay, so we got five, maybe six games left to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. All right, no pressure. Uh, for Michael Shelton from at Tanner Lewis 11 on Twitter, Michael, he says I'm five foot six and a half, and a BYU student. I'm getting beat in intramural flag football by taller receivers. Do you have any tips for me? <laughs> Oh, man, you're playing flag football. For, for me, it's be more physical with those kind of guys just because I'm in pads and stuff. But um, I, try to, I try to use a lot of the sports, like basketball, to my advantage. So, like, I was a smaller guy in basketball, so, but I would get rebounds. And a lot of people didn't know how I would get rebounds. But boxing, boxing out, I would say, is his best bet. <laughs> okay, there it is. There you, there's your tip uh, for, uh, for uh, A-Rod from uh, Twitter, at Texan Parker. In a game that has shifted mostly to spread for offenses, usually utilizing RPOs and four to five wideout sets, what are the difficulties or worries in implementing an offense that seems so different 
than college football's normal high-scoring offenses? And that is a question. Um, that is a good question. That's tough. Well, first of all, we, um, we've lined up in four and five wide out sets in every game this year, and we do run RPOs, with, and we ran a lot of them last week. Um, but we felt like from the start, one of the strengths of our team is that we have smart, reliable guys that we can ask a lot of scheme-wise. And so from day one, we set out to have an offense that was multiple, that we could, we could utilize multiple personnel groups, lots of different formations, shifts, motions, and, and that our guys would be able to handle that. And, and they've done a good job of it. We're, it's still a work in progress, but um, uh, that's, that's who we're trying to be. And the nice thing about it is we can always um, tailor it to who our best players are. And your personnel might change year to year, and it, this year it's changed during the season with some of the injuries we've had and some things that have happened and players, a couple of freshmen that have emerged and turned out to be really good. So um, the, the beauty of it is we can tailor it to, to our needs, and that's... Okay, still with A-Rod from at Cass underscore Stoff on Instagram. How much does the game plan change for Zach Wilson versus the defense from Northern Illinois as it compared to Hawaii? Um, well, it changes a little bit just because Northern Illinois plays a different scheme. And uh, but Northern Illinois is really good on defense, by the way. They're top 25 in a number of categories and top 10 in a number of categories nationally. Um, but we don't change that much for each, each quarterback or for, for Zach from week to week. We, we don't want, you know, we, we do have a multiple offense, but you can't keep reinventing, you know, a whole new offense from week to week. So um, there'll be a lot of carryover from the game before, and it comes down to execution. Okay. Hey, Rod, thanks for coming in tonight. Appreciate having you. My pleasure. Michael, same thing. Great to be here. Thanks, guys. All right, that's Aaron Roderick and Michael Shelton. Appreciation to both those guys. Thanks for coming in. Thursday night, BYU women's soccer team, winners of six of the last seven, hosting San Francisco in a crucial WCC match at Southfield. Watch and listen on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Thursday, 9 Eastern. Back with more right after this. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork. For BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare. Official medical provider for BYU Athletics. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Francisco women's soccer game Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. Bruh, I got no chill. The BYU TV sports post game BYU versus Northern Illinois, Saturday after the game. Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. All right, our Saturday game day schedule looks like this. Saturday, 1.30 Eastern for Cougar Pregame Live on BYU Radio. Then BYU TV's Countdown to Kickoff is live at 2.30 Eastern, followed by the game itself on ESPNU and BYU Radio. And then postgame coverage right after the game on both BYU TV and BYU Radio. Welcome back to our final minute of BYU football with Kalani Sitake, in part presented by Smith's Low Prices. 
Market Fresh at Smith's. Kalani, you can't believe it, but it's already your second to last home game of the season here in 2018 with NIU coming to town. It's crazy how fast yeah, it flies. Yeah, it's during the day, so it'll be a lot of fun. 1.30, it's yeah. an afternoon kick you like get, get a, a tan and watch <laughs> the game or get burnt, one or the other, right? So uh, just excited to be in, in, in Lavelle Edwards Stadium again and be around our fans and uh, just excited that, that I have this role as a head coach. Um, get to coach young guys like Mike Shelton and, and be around good people like A-Rod. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I know we have, our fans will show up and and we'll have, it'll be a good time. I, I, I feel good about where our team's headed, and I'm really excited. With a week off, our guys are really hungry to get back on the field. We also thank the fans who showed up here after our bye week to get us back yeah. in a game week mode, and so we're ready for BYU and NIU Saturday at 1.30. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. This is the hardest part of my week, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. It's all down to here. is really hard for me. So all right. You. Next Tuesday, you can join us here with Coach. Uh, go to BYUcougars.com slash Sitake Show to get your seats. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 Mountain, for Michael Shelton and Aaron Roderick and the head coach, Kalani Sitake. I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football. It's Kalani Sitake, live from Studio C. Good night. Go Cougs. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine. Pouring on me, think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is going to shine on me. Sun is going to shine on me. Sun is going to shine on me. Hi, I'm Dave McCann. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. You're watching BYU TV. I